Hi, I'm Will Selva. We have breaking news out of Indianapolis. The Colts have found their man, Shane Steichen, late of the Eagles, is now the new head coach for the Colts after their exhaustive search. And this was the tweet that they had put out a short time ago. And just to give you an idea of how good the Eagles offense was this season under Steichen, Philly scored the third most points per game and gained the Third most yards in the league in 2022 while finishing in the top 10 in just about every statistical category while the Colts scored the fewest total touchdowns in the entire league last season. Of course, on an interim basis, Jeff Saturday took over for Frank Reich, who was fired. Jeff Saturday went 1-7. and seven. He was considered a finalist for the job. But this weekend, they had informed those who were part of the hiring process that they would be headed in another direction. And the direction points to Shane Steichen, which, by the way, now leaves a vacancy on the Eagles coaching staff, where it looks mm. like Brian Johnson, the quarterback's coach, will be taking over as OC. At least that's how it looks like. Nothing official from the Eagles yet, but Shane Steichen now is the new head coach in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Will. We appreciate all that information. Yes, Steichen now 48 hours fresh off a Super Bowl loss, mm -hmm. but as Will mentioned, a wildly successful team offensively. Peter, the Colts own seven 2023 NFL draft picks. He's got to hire a staff. He's got to put a team together, mm -hmm. but the Colts have a big uh, absence in quarterback, and then they have a lot of things to fix offensively. But as a head coach, Peter, what, what do you make of this decision and what Shane Steichen can do? He called the plays for the Eagles this year. Mm -hmm. He called the plays. So a lot of times you see an offensive head coach, and whether it's McVay or Sean Payton or Kyle Shanahan, they're the ones saying, hey, it's my offense. I'm going to be the one calling it. Uh, Nick Sirianni said, I'm going to be the CEO of this team. I'm going to let Shane Steichen call the plays. That's not him. That's Kevin Petula, who's the passing coordinator. Steichen is the guy who runs the offense and calls the plays. So when you have Shane Steichen as your OC, you're now looking at that. As a head coach, that's a whole other gig. Now, does he take his offense that he had in, in Philadelphia, which was so much run, so much offensive line play, or does he say, I'm going to go back to what I did in L.A. and San Diego, where it was Phillip Rivers, it was Justin Herbert for a year, and they ran a different offense. So Steichen's really interesting to me. I, I, I think it's a, a great fit for the Colts because he's a young offensive coach. He's someone who can come in and work with whatever their young quarterback situation is going to be. Indy right now is a team in complete flux, but at least now you're going back and you're bringing in someone who can focus strictly on offense and then build around him, and we'll see who he does as D.C. and whatever else. Yeah, for sure, and it's crazy. You think about the last time Ursay hired a head coach. It was Frank Wright coming over from under Doug Peterson from the Philadelphia Eagles, and now it's Shane Steichen coming over from the Philadelphia Eagles to become the Colts' next head coach. And something you just ended with, it's always interesting to see when a coach comes from a wildly successful team as Shane Steichen is coming from. Who does he pluck off of the coaching staff to now join him in Indianapolis to help him find whoever the next quarterback is going to be to lead the offense? And then who is he bringing in, obviously, on the defensive side? The Indianapolis Colts went through so much last year where Frank Reich, a guy who has a ton of respect around the NFL, they fire him midway, and then obviously they bring in Saturday and all of that. And now Irsay has gone through countless interviews and has found his guy in Shane Steichen. And the one thing that we can't pull away from is how good the Philadelphia Eagles offense has been this year. Year, and now you have that in your building, the entire schemes and everything that was drawn up. You have Woody Learn from Sirianni now coming over to Indianapolis. So if you're a Colts mm -hmm. fan, you have to be excited about him. But now you're intrigued to see who is going to join him on this staff. I think you're definitely excited to get the Eagles guy. I think you are also relieved, if you're a Colts fan, mm -hmm. that they hired an actual professional mm -hmm. football coach. Ooh. And that Jim Mercer didn't hire Tony Kornheiser or somebody to coach the team. Um, big, big, big hire. This is big. Um, and also, listen, immediately, we just get to the names. Uh, the last five years, Andrew Luck, Jacoby Brissett, yep. Philip Rivers, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, and who? The Colts have the number four pick in the draft. The number one pick in the draft, in my opinion, is going to be for sale. So uh, it's time to start mm. cooking right away because this is a supple division and you don't want the Jaguars to start setting up shop for the next yep. ten years yep. and pe with Peterson and Lawrence. So there is no rest for the weary whatsoever. Go from the Super Bowl to, like, we got to make this draft pick and figure out who the hell our quarterback is. But... My feeling for the Colts fans, thank God. Thank God that we hired a professional football coach and now we can really do some business here. Uh, the... the Part about the division, I think you're spot on, Kyle, because there is opportunity here for the Colts. Offensively, this team is a mess, and there are things to – there's problems all over the place. Just to 
list some numbers for you that Shane is now walking into this building and addressing the fact that this team had the second fewest points scored per game last season. They had the third fewest rushing touchdowns despite having an injured Jonathan Taylor all season long. And they threw the most interceptions, which is an offensive line problem at times. Uh, I saw the first tweet I saw about this hire was who he goes out to get as an offensive line mm -hmm. coach will be really interesting. Yeah, they have a $20 million offensive guard in Quentin Nelson. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they have the worst offensive line in football. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not acceptable. Mm -hmm. It is not acceptable. And to take advantage of that division and also take advantage of a quarterback free agent market yeah. um, trade potential because as I'm reading it correctly Peter if you want a seven draft picks I yeah. think in 2023 a couple of them come from trades they had done last season but four is good one could be better in the 2023 mm. NFL draft yeah. in terms of overall. The draft is salty. It is. This year because the Texans, Texans have the two. Division rivals. Yeah. And they're the four. And I, I do think but the there Bears also are might open. be multiple quarterbacks. You yeah. might like Bryce Young. You might like C.J. Stroud. You might like Will Levis. So it's interesting. They might not have to. Where they rank those guys. Um, yeah. There's one team left. It's the Arizona Cardinals. Mm. And I'm told it's it's down to a couple names. Two to watch. Jonathan Ganton, the other Eagles coordinator, yep. despite that miserable Super Bowl, is a very good candidate there. And Lou Anarumo, defensive Ooh. coordinator of the Arizona Cardinals, 57 years old, Staten Island guy, yep. but had that Bengals defense rolling. Two very different type of coaches, mm. both defensive coaches. Defense. Those are the names that we're hearing right so now. So then to keep that in mind, if, if both of those teams, let's say the Texans, they just hired D'Amico Ryans. He's a defensive guy. He still has to go out and get an offensive coordinator. Then if the Cardinals hire a defensive guy, they have to get an OC. And what are the Texans doing at quarterback? Oh, it's fun. It it's really fun. Good. Football is really fun. Good.